Believe it or not, but Instagram basically just revealed how their ranking algorithms work for basically the whole platform, whether it's stories, because that's the thing for stories, reels, because that's the official sign for reels, or even search. Because Moziri, our old friend and CEO, head of Instagram basically, <laughs> released a video talking about the latest changes and best practices to get reach. And they also released two separate information packed blog posts basically showing us all it takes to grow your Instagram fast. Or maybe not, because um, yeah, to be honest, a lot of what's been said has already been said in a video and a blog post. So let me show you the small yet significant changes that we can sort of read between the lines to grow your Instagram the right way, beating that algorithm. Now, this is the first blog post, you know, very lengthy very lengthy. And if you're a part of my programs like the IG Black File, for example, or my creator mentorship, you basically know 99.9% .9 of these things already. Cause uh, yeah, we actually constantly track these things and obviously we work with a lot of creators and obviously share what works right now. Cause changes are happening all the time. With that being said, of course, Instagram has multiple algorithms and not just one algorithm like people always say. And each part of Instagram actually uses different ways and metrics and signals to rank your content. Now, if we take a look at this, generally speaking right here, we can see the different parts of Instagram, the different algorithms of Instagram. And one really interesting insight that we got is that they actually now officially talk about search, the search algorithm. I mean, they don't really give us a lot talking about the search algorithm, but if we take a look at this picture right here, apparently they view hashtags as part of the search algorithm, something kind of new for me. We've actually made some videos about hashtags in the past that are still applicable, by the way, right? I've linked them down below. Doesn't matter if they're a year or two old, it's still basically the same. There's one important thing they did mention about search. They say, make sure, where is it? Make sure you include relevant keywords in your content, your caption, your bio, and your hashtags, right? I'm gonna make a whole separate video about this soon to show you actually the power of SEO in action. But for now, just be aware to include certain keywords throughout your content to actually raise your chance of getting found if anybody's searching for you. If not, you should think about some other things first. Now, obviously there's these multiple parts of the algorithm, multiple parts of Instagram. And talking about the first thing, what they call feed, AKA the home feed algorithm. They say the home feed is here to help you catch up with friends, family, and interests. So if you think about it, friends, family, and interests, mostly people who you actually follow and mostly balanced content. And they go on to say that if we notice you prefer photos, we'll show you more photos. And I have definitely noticed this shift recently, especially in the video before this video, which you also should watch where I've analyzed different home feed types. But the important thing being, you need to understand your target audience and serve them with fitting content based on what they want. Not just about the content itself, but also Maybe it's even pictures, maybe it's carousels, maybe they wanna mix it up and also doing research in your niche to see, niche, niche, whatever, to see what's going on right now in your niche, niche. Now, here's where it actually gets interesting, my friends, because in order to rank, right, on the home feed, you need to hit certain signals. And these, actually, these signals constantly change according to my research. I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but the most important stats to hit according to this, right, in my own experience, working with tons of creators, Posting time, which is kind of interesting because it's the first time that I've actually really talked about this. How many people are interacting with the post, especially post velocity, meaning how quickly people are, people are actually liking, sharing, or commenting on it. How many seconds people spend on a post, any type of posts, even single pictures, which is why captions matter a lot more than you think with those single picture posts, right? I've been preaching this since uh, the, the first version of my course, the IG Black File came out back in 2020. Of course, it's always relative to, oh, relative to similar pictures and your niche. So if somebody just has boring pictures with boring captions that take probably half a second to swipe through. You wanna think of how to make one where people stay for a second, right? Or one and a half seconds. Which is why, and let's put it that way, lightly dressed and aesthetically pleasing individuals get more photo reach just because people just take time to view this picture. Maybe zoom in and, you know, getting up the watch time. And the other thing is, which is actually the big banger news right here is, how many times people have interacted with that person in the past few weeks, which is kind of like just a small side sentence right here. But this is actually the reason behind consistency and why I always say 
yeah, consistency actually matters more than you think. We can see it right there. Because if you post more, there's more chances for the algorithm to get signals from people interacting with you, which means the algorithm will just push you out more. Now, the next thing they talk about is how to get more story views. Another thing that people are obsessed with. <laughs> and story views are generally down. I have to admit that across the board. Let me know down below in the comments if they're down for you as well. Now, most of the things they talk about right there are not nothing really new. But one thing is, for the first First time ever, they also talk about something I've talked about a lot before, which is what they call the closeness factor. I used, used to call it the relationship factor. And it's basically a way for Instagram to predict how close you actually are to each of your followers, right? The connection that you have with your followers. I don't know why, but whenever I say connection, I always put my hands together like this and I'm starting to feel weird about it. If you know them in real life, of course, they're gonna rank them before other people, random people. And of course, there are ways to get that relationship factor up, even though you don't know them really. For example, the M automation, just a small thing. Or, and that's a, the obvious one, actually replying to DMs and not just leaving them on scene or just replying once. Actually speak with them. It's also very good. Or video calling, but um, let's not go into that too much. Now, the other thing that we can read from this and we, we knew about this, but I'm not gonna say it anymore because that's just how, how we roll. But basically, how people view your stories. Do they actually choose yours specifically over another, right? In the whole uh, story role thing. And then how many people actually watch all the way through reply or vote and stuff like this. And how, and that's the other thing, how many people quit your story, right? And swipe to another story or exit the story. Also something very important to track and optimize if you're really serious about this. In my program, in my course, the IG Black File, for example, short plug right here, we actually have a whole series dissecting how to read your Instagram story stats to know what these metrics actually mean and how to optimize them to get more story views. Because remember, that's a really important thing. Stories are by far the most important aggregator to sell and actually make people interested and warmed up for your offers. That's just the way it is. Now, next one being the explore page. The largely forgotten part about Instagram, it's kind of getting harder to rank, but once you got certain metrics down and your content appears on the explore page, you'll get massive amounts of reach. Now, just a quick recap of my previous video analyzing the algorithm, which is kind of funny because uh, I did it right before this one, right before they actually dropped basically the same thing. But the explore page itself, is mostly for non-reels related content, right? There are some reels on there, but photos, carousels, that's what's really. And people do forget about the explore page and trying to optimize their content for the explain explain page. And basically the same rules as the ones from the, the home page actually apply to the explore page more or less. But, and that's an important thing, the thresholds are just a lot higher, right? Obviously, you know, talking about velocity and people sharing. It's obviously just top content. And yet again, and I have to say it just because they put it there separately once more, another hint towards consistency. They mention it again. So the more consistent you are, obviously, the more likely you're also gonna appear on the Explore page. And now you can probably kind of see why some people get this sort of snowball effect. You know, talking about consistency because the algorithm just gets fed with a lot of data, good data, hopefully, if you optimize your content. We talk a lot about reels here on this channel, optimizing them. And they are actually the main reason why accounts blow up and grow right now. So if you're a dominator, which you should be, you know, but you should know all of these things that they talked about right here already. But there's some things between the lines that shed a little bit more insights into the nuances of, uh, yeah, getting more views on your reels. First of all, seems like shares are the most important factor to getting more reach, not really likes, comments it's in there but shares is what they mention first and sort of in its own paragraph so there's that and also for the first time officially they mentioned that low resolution reels right ones that are you know ones that are blurry ones that are grainy stuff like this don't really get a lot of reach obviously watermarked once you should know that by now but also reels that are muted or contain borders so you want to fill the whole screen up as much as possible. Obviously it's not hundred percent, but yeah. Also they mentioned that reels that are majority text based don't get a lot of reach. It's kind of a, there used to be these one second reels with a, with a quote or something like this that just blew up. This is part of why they don't blow up anymore because they put this rule into place. Also political issues. They don't really like that. And reels that have already been posted on Instagram. So 
just repost bland reposts obviously are not going to perform as well and won't reach the full potential now the other important thing they said is and we talk about this constantly right here but it, this time it's actually the wording they use that makes my transistors fire up because i'm a robot in case you don't know a lizard people robot according to one of my recent comments they say you get more reach if people watch a reel all the way through not spend a few seconds on the post for example they say all the way through which kind of heavily hints towards the ideal being at least a 100 percent retention rate you know watch time rate kind of hard to hit sometimes and especially if you have longer reels but according to my actual research the really important thing about this is just being a little bit better than similar reels among your competitors right just just being a few percent better relatively speaking which is also just a small side note for the the real serious ones seeing as there's not so many longer videos yet on instagram that are 40 to 90 seconds long if you actually optimize them, right? Uh, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to just be a bit better than the rest, just because there's not so many creators actually creating a little bit better, longer videos, right? So consider that a growth hack right now, even if you will. And here's a case study of somebody using this principle to go from not so many views to almost 6 million views. And you can actually do it too, right there.